don't remember exactly when I found this pattern, but it's in my stack of things I'd like to make one of these days. And uh, it's easy enough. I think I'm going to uh, make it today. It says, walk me. And uh, there's a dog, it's a paw print on either side of the dog. And it might be a little hard to see from here, but uh, the, the dog's tail comes out so you can hang a leash on it. Should be kind of fun. Let's, let's make this today. The plans call for half inch material. I had a piece of four quarter walnut that I planed down to half inch thick, and I can fit two sets of dog bodies and tails on this piece. I had a piece of half inch red oak on my shelf that's large enough to make two backer boards. I'll use scroll saw tape to attach the patterns to the wood. You roll off the double sided transparent tape onto the wood, then cut it to width using a utility knife. Then you peel off the backer and place the patterns on top of the tape. The tape holds the patterns firmly in place while you're cutting on the scroll saw, but it peels off quickly, leaving no residue when you're done. I'll be cutting all the parts for this project from half inch material, so I'm going to use a number 5 Pegas modified geometry blade in my Pegas scroll saw. I base my blade size choice on the thickness of the wood I'll be cutting, its hardness, and the complexity of the pattern. If you'd like more information on this, I'll leave a link to my video on this subject on the screen and in the description. I started by cutting one of the dogs. This is not a difficult pattern, but it is going to take some skill to cut accurately. I started cutting at one of the paws, and after marking the cut around the outside, I came to the first decision point. There are several places on the dog's body which have what I would call accent marks. Rather than just an outline of a dog's shape, these accent marks may be small, but they provide detail to make the animal look more realistic. Every time I come to one of these accent marks, I have to decide whether to keep cutting around the perimeter and come back to making these cuts later, or to make them as I go along. I left it to cut the accent here before continuing on. I followed the curve around the paw and kept cutting to the end of the accent mark. I wanted to keep this just it, this as just a line, so I backed the blade up to the intersection where the line started upwards along the side of the dog's body. If I had tried to turn the blade around at the end of the accent mark, it would have left a little circle, and I didn't want that. I followed the cut line up along the dog's body, and there was no doubt at all on how to cut the second accent. The curve for the dog's leg continued smoothly into the accent, so I kept following it until the line ended. It was easy to back the blade out to the vertical line again, pivot the workpiece, then start cutting again. Now it was a matter of following the cut line vertically, then around the top of the dog's ear, and continuing cutting right in into that accent of the dog's ear attached to the top of its head. It was easy to back the blade out that short distance, pivot the workpiece, then make the cut across the top of the dog's head. From that point on, the cuts were a mirror image of what they had been on the left side of the dog. It didn't take very long to finish the cut, and the dog's body was complete. The next logical step was to cut the square slot that the dog's tail would fit into. I thought this was a simple yet clever design. The slot and tab will provide a lot more strength to the tail than just gluing it onto the dog's body with a butt joint. I have to emphasize that for this to look right, and in order for there to be a tight connection, this slot needs to be square. The corners need to be square, not rounded. Square is key. I cut from the pilot hole to a corner, so the tip of the blade touched the point of that corner. Then I backed off the blade very slightly, just enough that the blade wasn't cutting, pivoted the workpiece 90 degrees, and then started cutting again right on the line. I followed the same procedure at each of the four corners. Now I can cut the tail. The dimensions of this piece are critical. When I planed this piece of walnut down to one half inch thick, I measured the thickness with a caliper to make sure it was exactly 0 0.50 inches thick. You can't get that kind of accuracy with a tape measure or a ruler. I cut the bottom first, but rather than make the cuts for the tab, I cut all the way across, then made the curve cut up one side and off the end of the board. The reason I did this was that the board was long enough to project beyond the front of the scroll saw table. This made it difficult to maneuver, and I wanted close control. Now I could go back to the end with the tab and carefully make the vertical cut right to the intersection. Then I backed the blade out and made the connecting horizontal cut. 
Next, I performed the same set of operations on the other side. It's time for one of those little moments of truth, and the tab for the tail is a bit too large to fit into the slot. But that's okay, this is better than if the fit was too loose. I turned to the countertop and used a ruler and pencil to draw one vertical and one horizontal line to enlarge the square a bit. I made a couple of careful cuts to those two places. The reason I emerged the slot rather than reduce the tab is that it would have been difficult to reduce the thickness of the wood on the scroll saw. I suppose I could have sanded the thickness down a bit, then made a cut to the width of the tab on the scroll saw, but enlarging the slot on two sides was easier. The second test fit showed the parts now fit together snugly. When I add some glue, this will be an extremely strong joint. With the dog completed, I can move on to the backer. The shape is simply a rectangle with rounded corners. The cutouts for the paw prints add some interest to an otherwise boring background. The cuts for the paws aren't difficult, they're just a matter of cutting from the pilot hole to the line and following the line around. With all these quick cuts in a row, I spent as much or more time threading the blade through pilot holes and tightening the upper blade holder again as I did cutting. This is why you want a scroll saw like the Pegasus. It's easy to thread the blade through pilot holes and then tighten the blade in the upper holder with just a thumb screw. The Pegasus scroll saw uses the same mechanism for the lower holder as well, making blade changes quick and easy too. I peeled the pattern off the backer and set the dog against it for a preview of what this will look like after the glue up. It's shaping up nicely. Cutting letters requires extra patience and attention to detail. For most parts of the majority of patterns, I cut right on the line, but I usually cut on the inside of the lines for letters. My reasoning is that letters are, by nature, close together, except for the spaces in between words. This means that if you cut even slightly outside the lines, you run the risk of two letters running into each other. For letters like A and O and others, you have the possibility of the center section falling out. This could ruin not only that letter, but the look of the entire project. I've had to toss projects with quite a bit of time invested because one or two bad cuts. When I was editing the section where I cut the letters walk me into the bone, I noticed that because the letters were so small, it was not easy to see what I was doing. So I found a stencil kit for two inch high letters and used the letter W to trace the shape onto a piece of half inch thick oak. This will make it much easier to see how I went about cutting this letter. I drilled a pilot hole near one of the top corners of the W, then cut to the corner. When I arrived there, I backed the blade up slightly so it was no longer cutting. Then I pivoted the workpiece until it was facing in the direction I wanted to cut next. I followed the long line down, but I did not try to make that very small angle because it would be difficult to make that turn and get a sharp point. Instead, I kept cutting in the same direction, as if that line had been extended all the way down to the bottom of the letter. At the bottom, I was easily able to make the needed 90 degree turn. I followed the short line at the bottom, made another 90 degree turn, then cut up the vertical line for the left side of the W. At the top, I made that turn in the normal manner, cut across the short line, and finished in the corner where I had started. This allowed the waste piece to be removed. With that piece cut and the waste out of the way, I was able to start the angled cut next. I followed that line up to the point where it met the next line. However, rather than try to pivot the workpiece for that steep angle, I backed the blade to the waist area and then I cut along the line parallel to the one I had just cut. This line had a very wide obtuse angle in the middle and it was very easy to shift the workpiece slightly to keep following the line to the top. Once I reached the top, the waist piece easily popped out just like the first one had done. The next cut completed the middle part of the W. I started in the waist area and made the angled cut to the bottom. Then I backed the blade up to the top to make the cut on the parallel line. Rather than make the sharp turn at the end of that line, I continued cutting as if the line kept going until I reached the bottom corner. I made the turn in the usual manner, cut across the bottom, and that completed the middle portion of the W. The last part of the W is a piece of cake to cut. I started in the waist section, then followed the line up to the top. I made a 90 degree turn, cut the short horse on the line, made another 90 degree turn, and then I followed the line down to the bottom. The finished W gives you an idea of how this method of cutting leaves sharp points where they should be and sharp clean corners as well. 
I hope that little exercise was helpful toward teaching you how to cut letters accurately with a scroll saw. When cutting the letter A, you need to be careful when cutting the crossbar. If you go over the lines while cutting this letter, the little triangle on the top may fall out and ruin the letter. Of course, this bone with writing is only a small part of the entire project, so if you ruin the cut, you can just toss this small piece and make another. The rest of the letters were relatively easy. I concentrated on staying inside the lines and making sharp corners. I started cutting the bone on one end with the point in the middle where the two curves met. Making this exterior cut was simply a matter of following the line all the way around. With the bone completed, I pulled off the scroll saw tape and pattern. Then I moved the backer and the dog over from the nearby countertop and set the bone on top of the backer underneath the dog shape. This did not take long to cut and it's looking good. All that's left to do is the glue up and the finish. I started the glue up with the bone. I used a small bottle to squeeze out a bead of glue. Then I spread it around with my fingertip. I used two spring clamps to hold the bone in place while the glue dries. Next, I added glue to the surfaces of the dog's tail that were going to be in contact with the slot in the backer. This was a snug fit, so I had to work at it, at it a bit to get the tail in place. Once that was done, I squeezed some glue onto the back of the dog and spread it out evenly. I placed the dog between the paw prints on the sides and between the top of the backer and the bone on the bottom. Last, I added some F-clamps to hold the dog in place against the backer while the glue dried. I like the way this project turned out. It almost makes me wish I had a dog. I'd love to read any comments you have in this project, and I reply to every comment. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Since I know you're still in the mood for more woodworking, links to a couple of videos to watch next are on the screen.